Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers War for Cybertron trilogy Autobot Red Alert. Brought to you by Netflix. This Red Alert is a direct redeco of his Siege figure. This time, just being more heavily battle damaged to reflect his appearance in the War for Cybertron cartoon. And he is part of the second wave of deluxe figures, and as such, comes with another one of the pieces of the Teletran 1 backdrop. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this will go. We'll take a look at Red Alert in his packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll see the instructions, we'll see his backdrop piece, and then we'll see Red Alert himself in both vehicle and robot modes. A ton of group shots, comparisons, all that. And then, of course, at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Red Alert comes in your standard Netflix-branded War for Cybertron packaging. See him front and center. My guy's head is cocked a little oddly. Don't think that'll be an issue. I haven't get a lot of copies though with like crooked heads in their packaging lately. I wonder if it's just me or... Uh, you can see he's got some new paint apps which cause a little bit of color mismatch because he's got like a softer white plastic, very similar to side swipes, but then his painted white is very, very bright. So they really don't match up well. But, you know, we'll get a better look at that once we get him out of the box. On the side here, you just get a very desaturated version of his Siege artwork. I'm pretty sure that's a Siege artwork. And then over here, you get the renders of the toy, which look a lot better than the finished product, if I'm being honest. You can see they really peeled back the budget for those battle damage apps. It's even got realistic looking rust on the feet, which... Eh. <laughs> Doesn't look quite so good on the real thing. But he does take 20, or sorry, not 20, but 17 steps to transform. Though by now you're probably all intimately familiar with this transformation scheme. So nothing really new there. And then over here on the side, you just get your standard black and white and red Earth Res artwork. Okay, here's the backdrop piece that comes with Red Alert. And you can see this one's got a lot going on. It's uh, the other half of the console, some monitors here. Looks like uh, some kind of a radar. It's this target there, so that's neat. So yeah, he's got a pretty interesting piece of the overall backdrop as we inch closer and closer to the finished product. And here we get Red Alert's instructions. Got his name, render, little city-state badge thing, logo. This shows you how to have him wield his blaster or combine it with his light bar to make uh, some sort of an axe. And then we get the transformation for Red Alert from robot to vehicle. And it actually doesn't call out where to store his weapon, interestingly. Uh, typically just stored on one of the two sides here. So yeah, that's what we get there. And now we get our first look at Red Alert's vehicle mode. And you can see there's a lot of uh, weathering and damage effects on here. The hood kind of fades to gray as you get closer to the windshield. This big old burn mark here. This really nice uh, crack motif going on here with the windshield. I like that. Um, you get some gray here on the side, which is interesting. And there's also a lot more black along the side than there is on the standard release. And we'll take a look at that. Wheels are still red, so that's good. They kept the hubcaps painted, unlike the wheel jack that they did. Then you get more of that graying, weathering effect toward the back. Sadly, still no painted taillights there. And, you know, overall looks pretty good. Uh, no, like, abundant flat gray plastic like you have on some of these. I guess this part's gray, but it's kind of a small accent, so it's not too bad. And the shins look pretty similar to the standard release. So, yeah, that's what you get. Of course, you got his weapon being stored on the side. That's always an option if you want to use it. If you don't, always up to you. And for a direct comparison, here's the standard Siege Red Alert, who is significantly less battle damage than this toy and also just most of the other Siege toys. So, very clean looking alt mode. No obvious damage there. You can see I mentioned there's more black along the sides on this one. So that's interesting. Um, undersides are about the same. and They seem to have the same exact paint mask for the battle damage. Though this one does seem to be lightened up a little bit. Not lightened as in like brighter color, but less spray. But if you look at it, 
pretty much the same layout. So that's interesting that you'd see that between the two lines. Other than that, yeah, that's about it. Um, our new guy, you can see, has a slightly darker light bar than the original. And yeah, do you, you just kind of get your pick. Do you want a, a Siege Red Alert that's very clean looking and forms as a pretty decent stand-in for a G1 toy? Or do you want one that looks like he actually came from you know the show or from the trenches of war? Because this guy pulls it off really well. And I, I think, I mean, they're both pretty much equal, you know, as far as like the paint apps and everything. You don't have one that's significantly better or worse than the other. You just get one that, you know, has the weathering effects to it. So it's up to you what you want. And I like that, right? It's, they're different, but not, you know, one being inherently superior, which is good. Choice is always good. I also wanted to include a shot with the other Netflix version of this mold. And that is the Netflix War for Cybertron Sideswipe from the first wave. And I really just wanted to show you how quite different they are. They didn't, like, use the same battle damage paint mask or anything. The damage that they have is quite different. The weathering effects are different. And, yeah, they both stand out very well from each other. You can see Sideswipe here is, like, all gray in the back, and he doesn't go with that. So, yeah, he's got some more damage in, you know, some places, less than others. Overall, I think it works out pretty well, and these two really do match aesthetically and are, are really great additions, I would say, to, you know, your Netflix-based collection if that's something you're building. Okay, now we get to focus on Red Alert in his robot mode, and you can see right now I have him wielding his weapons as if they're an axe. Now, to me, I always thought this combination was kind of silly because a, a light bar doesn't seem like it would make a really great axe. It seems like it would just, you know, break. But it is an option that you have if you so choose. I, however, prefer the more standard configuration because it looks just kind of less bizarre and silly. So I'm going to go ahead and give him back his weapons the way they're supposed to be. Put that back on his back there for storage. And let's go ahead and just set him back more neutral position, huh? There we go. All right, so here's red in a standard configuration and some things stand out for one you get this new bit of battle damage that becomes visible just big old black mark on his uh, shoulders i guess is a scorch mark um you'll see that he has a real color matching issue uh the actual places where white plastic is used as opposed to white paint over other colors is a very warm color almost a tan uh reminds me of wheeljack's coloration so that's a really odd choice. I don't know why they went with that. I don't know if it was a mistake or what, but it really causes some issues with the color matching. And I wish it was a little more neutral like the standard release. Another thing worth noticing that's really cool is his feet are done in this like rusty brown color. And it looks to me like that's intentional, like it's supposed to be rust because normally his feet are um, silver. So if that's the case, that's actually kind of cool. I, I like it. Um, we've seen a lot of different, you know, battle damage effects, cracks, singes, uh, you know, scrapes. We haven't really seen rust yet. And given the time frame we're in now, perhaps this was kind of their early testing at trying out rust effects for some other figures who might be, you know, in the queue for reviews. Here we get another comparison with the standard Siege Red Alert. And you can see what I meant about the different plastic colors. His is just a much warmer color than his. I mean, he doesn't color match perfectly either. You know, his uh, pieces up here, which I think are, are actually white plastic, like the hood and all that, for some reason they don't match the colors of this. So that's kind of odd, right? I always found that weird. But yeah, the problem's way worse here because the white paint they use does look a lot like the white plastic used on the standard version. So it's just a much bigger difference overall. Uh, most of the other shades used, I, I would say, are almost exactly the same. I think it looks like the reds are a little bit darker on the uh, Netflix Red Alert. And again, uh, talking about the feet, you can see normally they're a silver color. So making them brown like this, I can only imagine they did it specifically to create a rust effect, which I, I think is kind of cool, right? You figure if he's you know running around in some sort of battle trenches, and he's getting, you know, liquids and corrosives and stuff all over his feet, they may start to rust, so. Kind of neat. 
And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and bust out the Netflix Sideswipe again, just so you can see these two castmates together. And I'll say that his whites are actually a lot closer to Sideswipes than they are, you know, the other Red Alert. I don't know if they're identical. They still appear to be a little bit different. Hmm, I wonder. Maybe that's why his plastic colors don't match is they just went with the same colors they used for the Sideswipe version. Cause they, I mean, if they're not exact, they're really close. It's hard to say for sure. But yeah, these two, I mean, they do look great together. They have very different colors. They get different head sculpts, different weapons. So, you know, it doesn't just look like two of the same. They just look like two teammates fighting a war. So I like it. I like the way they, they pair together. And I do have another review coming up that's going to add to this Netflix Lamborghini aesthetic. So, you know, stay tuned for that. All right, so final thoughts on this guy. There are some things I like about him. I do really like the battle damage paint that they've added in you know, an attempt to make him look like he belongs in the show. I also, like I said, really like the rust effects. I think that's pretty creative. I am having a really hard time getting over the just like abysmal color matching though between his whites. You basically have white and cream and they, they don't really mesh well together. He looks rather disjointed. So, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say. I like him for having a version of the character that actually looks like he came from the show, but I think as far as a more quintessential version of Red Alert, I think I'd rather stick with the standard version. Now, there is a rumor, it's not confirmed, but there is apparently an Earth version of the Sideswipe mold, where like the car has been redone to look like an actual Earth car. Um, that was never released, but it's rumored that that's going to be released eventually and that it's going to have a retool released in the form of Red Alert, who is supposedly going to be a Walgreens exclusive. Now, again, this is all hearsay. I haven't seen anything. I think there might be a leaked listing, if I remember right, which does lend some credence to it. Because I highly doubt they just released Siege Red Alert again. So if that's the case, you may be, you know, looking at double or triple dipping on this, depending on how many you bought, because a lot of people, they're all in it for the G1. And as good as the standard Siege one is, you just know those people are going to flock to, you know, a pseudo Earthrise version. I don't know what line he'd be under, maybe Kingdom Selects, who knows. So just something to keep in mind as to whether or not you want to purchase this guy. Um... You know, if you don't have any version of Red Alert and you don't really care about the colors too much, he's perfectly passable. He has all the parts that the standard release has. Uh, if you like the cleaner colors, though, you may want to see if you can track down a Siege Red Alert, though at this point it's going to be kind of hard to do. Or, you know, hedge your bets and see if holding out for a potential Earthrise redo is, you know, something you want to put some faith in and see if it comes to fruition. So yeah, um, I mean, he's he's like the Wheeljack. He's really not necessary unless you just really want the aesthetic or you really want to complete your Teletran one uh, little display there. Otherwise, I think he's an easy pass, honestly, especially with the inferior plastic colors. Those really bother me. Naturally, this is just how I feel about Red Alert. Now I want to know what you all think of the toy. Do you see him as worth picking up or was he an easy pass for you? Do you think his deco is better or worse than the standard version? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this look at Netflix's Transformers War for Cybertron Red Alert. And with all that said, I will see you next time.